All right, so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up and launch a cold email campaign using smartly.ai. If you don't know who I am, my name is Leonardo. I have run over 146 cold email campaign just using smartly just in the past few months. And these are some of the results that we got by doing that. So there are four main steps in creating a cold email campaign using smartly. Number one is importing leads. Number two is sequences three setup and four final review. So let's begin with importing leads. This is the first step. It's not required to do this as first step. However, recommended to do this first before doing anything else. This is because once you have imported your leads, when you write the scripts for the campaign, you will be able to select the fields that you mapped in the beginning, you know, the custom fields. So importing leads is just about uploading a CSV with your lead list in Smartly. So let's go ahead on the Smart Lead uh, website and let's create an account or sign in. First thing you need to do is you need to go here, create a campaign, uh, name the campaign, example, and then you need to upload the CSV file. So let's go on to uh, the Google spreadsheet. So this is our sample uh, lead list. And the first thing I recommend you to do before downloading the CSV is cleaning the company names if you plan on mentioning it in your cold email campaign. Because obviously, if you plan on mentioning the company name in your cold email campaign, it's not gonna look good if you say, Beauty Trends LLC in your email, right? So the first thing I recommend you to do is to clean the company name. So you can do that by using lead formatter and you can go to format company names and then you just type the column of your uh, company names. That's it. So once you've done that, you can easily go here to file and download the CSV and then upload it on Smartly. Now, you shouldn't worry about these settings. So just click on save and then you map the fields. So obviously make sure that those fields are mapped correctly. Also, if you plan on using an additional field here, like for, for example, personalization, I'm gonna show you how you can map that, or that field as well. So just go here, click on delete, and then upload the new lead list. And then here, personalization, you can do custom field here so that when, when you want to mention this in your cold email campaign, you just need to type the brackets and then personalization. After that, you click on save and next. Now, the next step is sequences. So there are a few things to pay attention to in this section, which I'm gonna walk you through in just a few seconds. But the first one is the subject line, right? So you can say, for example, thoughts, first name. And then if you want to call out or mention any custom field in your lead list, you can just use the big brackets here and uh, select the custom field you want to use, or you can go here to variables and select it as well. As far as the uh, copy, here you can write your, your cold email copy as usual. So I'm gonna, just gonna do something random like, hi, hello, hey, first name. And then you can type whatever you want here. All right, so what I just did here is spin tags, right? So spin tags is the next thing you need to pay attention to when writing your uh, cold email scripts. This is basically something that you need to be able to land in your uh, prospects primary inbox more often than you land in spam. And this is because spin tax spins different uh, variants of the same word. So for example, here, I could have just said hello, but instead I use spin tax. And this allows me to uh, use three different variants so that my emails are not gonna look the same and are not gonna be the same every time I send them, right? Then you can add different variants here. So for example, let's say you want to split test a variable like the subject line, even though I don't recommend you to uh, split test the subject line first, before doing anything else, I recommend you to split test the offer, the angle you're using, the cold email script or the target market. I have a full video on how to do split testing with cold email, which I'm gonna link uh, above here in this video. But basically, you just need to click on add variant and then it's gonna allow you to create or write a different subject line and a different uh, copy. As far as the steps, you can add different steps to your cold email campaigns, which are just follow-ups. So let's say you want to do a three-step sequence. You're gonna send the first email, then you're gonna send another step, which is email here, and then make sure that here you set up the uh, correct time delay, which I usually, I usually do three days. And then if you wanna do a third step, you can just go here and then click on email. Manual is a manual step that is going to basically send you a notification on email for whatever you wrote here. But usually I just do uh, email steps, so just a different follow-up. So, and then here the time delay has to be higher. So I typically do five. And then you need to write, of course, uh, some sort of email here to be able to go to the next steps. 
Now, another thing to pay attention to is a subject line for the second and the third step in this case, right? As you can read here, you can leave the subject line empty if you want your email to be a reply. So with the same in the same thread to the leads uh, response. So basically, this is if I don't edit the subject line here on the second step, it's gonna appear as a follow-up, so as a reply to the first cold email you sent. Otherwise, if you type a subject line here, it's basically gonna create a new uh, email thread. So the next step is a setup. So you need to choose the sender accounts here, and then you need to schedule the campaign. Now here, there are a few options that you need to uh, keep in mind, which are the time zone. You need to select a time zone, and then you need to select the days that you want to send your cold emails. So I typically just do Monday to Friday, don't do weekends. So I typically leave these as they are. And then time period, I usually do from 8 a.m. until uh, 5 p.m. And then email will be sent. This is a time delay between emails sent. So I typically leave it at like 20 minutes, which is fine because it will allow for 27 emails to be sent uh, per day per setting account, which is fine. And then here you can select a date if you want to schedule your campaign for let's say next Monday, or otherwise, if you want to launch this campaign today, just leave this, this field empty. And then max number of net new leads reached per day per campaign. This means how many new people, new leads that you want to reach out to uh, per day with this campaign only. So this really depends on your uh, sending volume on your accounts. And this also depends on how many accounts you have, of course. Then click on save. And then another thing you need to make sure that you do in this section is the campaign settings right here, which is very important, right? So this allows you to, well, edit the name of the campaign. And then most importantly, um, track or or make sure that you don't track email opens and don't track link clicks. So make sure you select these options because if you track email opens, this is gonna basically put a pixel in your in your cold email that just decreases the, your deliverability. So it will track open, so you will be able to see the open rates. But number one, this metric is not really accurate. It's not really relevant anyway. And number two, uh, this decreases your deliverability. So that's why I always recommend uh, to not track open rates and link clicks as well. And then this, you should enable this, so boost your deliverability by sending emails in plain text without HTML. And the prioritize sending pattern uh, setting, this is basically how many emails you want to dedicate out of your daily sending limit uh, to follow-ups and to uh, reaching out new leads. So for example, let's say you want to send a thousand emails per day and you select 50% follow-ups and 50% new leads. What this is going to do is this is going to send 500 emails to net new leads and 500 follow-ups, which are uh, step, well, all the steps after step one. So step two and step three in this case. I typically do 80% net new leads and 20% uh, follow-ups. And this is because the first email, the first cold email you send, it will always have the higher reply rate or the highest reply rate of the campaign. So I want to prioritize reaching new leads uh, instead of doing follow-ups. And then company level auto post. This is, I typically don't do this, but this is basically all auto poses, all the leads um, from the same company if one of those leads uh, responds to your email. The reason why you don't do this is because, uh, well, someone could easily send you a reply that could be an out of office reply. And so if you receive an out of office reply and you have this enabled, well, the campaign, what's going to do is it's going to post all the leads from the same company, even though the response that you got from a prospect was not really a response. It was just a or an out of office um, auto response. So I typically don't enable this. And then enhanced email sending and delivery. This is basically a setting that, as you as you can read here, it matches your leads email providers with your uh, mailbox providers to boost their ability. So basically, if you have Gmail accounts and you have Google accounts, the Gmail accounts are going to reach out to the leads that are using Gmail, and the Outlook accounts are going to reach out to the leads that are using Outlook. Very simple. So I recommend you to enable this if you have um, different providers, if you're using different providers across your accounts. If you're just using Gmail or if you're just using Outlook, it doesn't make much sense to do this. To do this. Then AI lead categorization. This is basically a setting that allows you to auto-categorize your leads or your replies by using Smart Leads AI so that when you go to the master inbox, you already have most of the replies or some of the replies that are auto-categorized as or with, you know, after it can be interested, it can be not interested, it can be out of office. This is very useful uh, for out of office replies because Smart Leads AI is very accurate when it comes to detecting out of office replies. So what I typically do is I select not interested. This is also very accurate for not interested replies. 
do not contact other office and wrong person. All of the other ones, if it doesn't, if it doesn't categorize the replies, that means that most of the remaining replies that you didn't auto categorize are going to be interested, meeting requests, and information requests, which are the ones that I want to focus on. So I usually set this um, this way. Ignore the auto categorized out of office replies from the reply percentage. This is useful if you want to know your true reply rates. So really how many people are manually responding to your emails as opposed to how many out of office auto replies you get, right? I recommend you to leave these uh, disabled if you want to test the reliability. Because if you want to test the reliability, you want to make sure your emails are landing in the primary inbox and not spam, then look at the overall reply rate. So if you get out of office replies, then that's a good sign you're not letting it spam. Uh, but if you want to know your true reply rate, then um, simply enable this. And then reactivate auto categorize out of office leads after a delay. This is useful if you have a few out of office replies. And those people, obviously, when you when smart lead receives a, a reply from those people, it auto poses those leads. So those leads are not going to receive any more emails. So this is useful if you want to re-engage those leads that uh, were responding with an out of office reply after a set number of days, which I usually put as 10. Unsubscribe, this is basically a setting that allows you to put an unsubscribe link in your emails. Now, the problem with this is that this is essentially a link and you can only activate this on campaigns with this setting turned off. So effectively you are sending HTML and you are effectively sending a link in all your emails. So this will decrease your durability. Now, the thing here is that if you want to comply with can spam lows in the US, you're not required to put an unsubscribe link. What you're required to do is to put a some sort of way that they or the leads can unsubscribe from your emails. So that can even be a sentence at the end of your emails, which is if you don't want to receive these emails anymore, simply reply with no thanks or simply reply with unsubscribe. That is still compliant with can spam lows. So I recommend you to do that uh, instead of, well, sending a link, which will decrease your ability. And now the last setting here is webhooks. So this is useful if you want to receive notifications for uh, new replies or whatever uh, other event type, right? So here you just put the webhook name. You need to put the URL. So if you're using Zapier, for example, it will, and you're using an automation with Zapier, it will give you a link or a URL and you need to paste here for the webhook to actually work. And then event type here, this is a list of all the events that you can be notified for. So I would say the most useful one is the email reply, right? So here you get notified for every reply that you receive from your cold email campaign and you get notified through the webhook. Now, if you're using Zapier or another automation tool like make.com, you can easily set a filter. So you will basically get notified only for interested, you know, meeting requests or uh, positive replies from your, from your call email campaign, which is super useful because you don't want to be notified for every out of office reply or every not interested reply. You only want to be notified and interrupted um, by the interested, you know, positive leads, right? So then you just go to add here and you will be able to add your webhook. In the final review section, make sure you send a test email to yourself for every variant that you set up in your campaign. In the test email you receive, seek for a custom field that you previously set up in Smartly and make sure that those are populated correctly and they don't appear in brackets. Also, seek for the spin tags, make sure everything is set up correctly and there are no uh, brackets or uh, no mistakes in your, in your copy. And then by receiving your emails, you'll, you'll also get to see how it would appear in your prospect's inbox. And this helps your time to decide if you will respond to your own cold email or not. So this helps you determine if your copy is good, if your uh, campaign is on point and everything is set up correctly. So let's go on Smartly and let's see how this looks. So as you can see here, we've got our leads and here are the emails that we would send to the leads. So as you can see, we've got variant A and variant B here. So as I said, you want to make sure you send a test email uh, to yourself for each of those variants to make sure that every variant, every script is set up correctly and there are no mistakes. So to do that, you can just go to send test email here and you will need to type your email address and then you will see uh, a test email pop up in your inbox and you'll be able to see how it looks. So everything else is set up. All you need to do is click this button schedule or start a campaign. And that's really it for this video. So if you want us to run your cold email campaigns and look 30 meetings with relevant decision makers at your target companies in the next six months on a pay per show basis, feel free to book a call below. Besides that, I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.